Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO and Entrepreneur Bootcamp. And this session is on market research. I have a firm belief that entrepreneurs should not delegate market research. They must do it and understand it themselves. It's the foundation of the business to prove there's a need in the market or a problem to solve. And so I think it's one of the very first things that generally needs to be done to validate that a business idea is potentially a good business. So let's get into this and look at the agenda that we have for today in our market research segment. First, we're going to define the best practices in market research and give you some ideas, roadmaps, and best practices. We're going to talk about gathering the data and give you many sources to look at. We're going to talk about how you define the market. And this is going to be a deep dive into the details of what defines a market because it's a lot more detail than most people understand and do. And this is one of the reasons financings tend to fail because the entrepreneur does not articulate and target their market specifically enough to create a niche that is addressable by a startup as opposed to a multi-billion dollar total addressable market opportunity, which would only be addressable by a larger company with more resources. We're going to about t talk about testing in that market and how iteration is always a very important concept around market research. As you change different elements, it will have a ripple effect and change others. So first, let's define market research. Market research is a systematic process of gathering and recording and then analyzing that data about customers or prospects, as well as competitors and the market as a whole. Now, market is a pretty ambiguous word, and we're going to you know, dig into that in this session because there are all kinds of levels of markets, and I would almost picture a market as sort of a concentric set of circles that you'll see later. So market research obviously can be used to create a business plan, uh, to launch a new product or service. So that could be an evolutionary product or incremental step, or it could be a brand new product that might even be disruptive to the market, of course. Um, market research you know, needs to fine tune existing products and services and maybe subdivide through micro-segmentations of markets where different segments of markets have different needs and you add uh, special features or potentially just packaging and messaging around that to address the needs of that market. You also want to be able to expand into new markets, and we'll talk about a multi-step uh, market entry process or go-to-market strategy. I'm a firm believer that most market entry strategies should have at least three steps and maybe four steps, and you'll, you'll understand that by the end of this session. Uh, additionally, market research must determine which portion of the market very specifically will have the highest need and will purchase a product. And we're going to give you some tools and the uh, market evaluation worksheet, as well as many dimensions this can be looked at on, because there could easily be 20, 30, 50, potentially even 100 variables that would segment a market and create smaller niches that are easier to address. Because as we'll talk about later, you want to be a big fish in a small pond not a big fish in the ocean that's going to be eaten by all the whales uh, that have tremendous amounts of financing and resources to throw at your market once you prove it's a good market. Additionally, we're going to talk about defining the ideal customer or the prototype customer. Some uh, people call it by other names, but essentially it's a description of your best customer who you want to segregate out and uh, want to be ideally fish in a barrel for you to go fishing for because you know exactly where they are, what they want to hear because of their problem and their needed solution. Uh, and that creates a market niche that a startup can potentially protect and dominate because it's small enough not to attract the attention of larger companies 
and huge amounts of capital going to competitive startups. So market research should always be done first. That's the most important concept to understand. And as I said, I think the entrepreneur and CEO really needs to be hands-on in this work themselves. The military would never go into a battlefield without gathering intelligence first. The picture here shows the AWAC plane that's used for collecting all kinds of information on the battlefield. And of course, the penalty can be lots of people dying in battle. But the penalty can also be a company dying. And that's one of the reasons we have 80% failure rates, because lots of startups do not do the level of market research that they need to do to prove and segment and uh, create the market targeting that's needed because an, an idea might have a hundred different markets or applications which could potentially be thousands of potential niches and you'll see that later but even though the cost can be death a business often does not do the needed market research so if there's anything you should take away from this session it's that you the entrepreneur the ceo and to some extent the entire management team needs to participate in understanding your target market as well as the broader markets that might be defined as total addressable market or vertical market or a horizontal market or any other terms so we've got to understand that market is a very ambiguous term and so you need to qualify it and talk about it in the size and capacity that it is. So don't fly blind. Send in your AWAC and gather all the market research needed. It's 10 times easier today with the internet than it was back in the 80s when all of this information wasn't in in instantly accessible uh, on the, uh, uh, the internet and web. So let's define market research a little. First, market research needs a budget, okay? Now, that doesn't mean dedicated people and dedicated financial resources, but in a startup, it means the time that is appropriate to allocate toward gathering that data. There is research from a, a gentleman who has been a guest a lecturer and, and faculty at the CEO Boot Camp, we'll talk about later, uh, named Ralph Grabowski who showed that a company had a much higher success chance when they spent twice as much on the market research than they did in R&D. And I believe this was uh, mostly high-tech companies, which, of course, are investing pretty heavily in R&D. And I have seen companies fail because of this before. They get $5 million in venture capital, and they spend it all on the product, and they don't allocate any of the, the time, especially the CEO and the senior sales and marketing people that, that may be on your team full-time, or maybe they're just virtual or contract executives that are gathering the market research so that the targeting and the messaging and the budget and the strategic marketing plan is defined well. Few people uh, that, that you think should know how to do this do know how to do it. I find even market research firms or people that claim to be market research experts often you know, are kind of repeating what they did for previous companies as opposed to really thinking about how every business uh, and every product or service has and should have its own market, especially during the early market entry stages. So the entrepreneur and CEO or the GM in a, in a larger company that's in charge of the product launch really needs to understand that market. And, and another concept to really understand is what you think does not matter. Now, let me, let me rephrase that. What I mean by that is your perceptions and any individual's perceptions are meaningless. The only thing that matters is what your target customer market uh, person thinks, your buyer or your decision maker. So you've got to make sure that your personal opinion an ego can be overridden by the data. Market research and, and launching and designing a market entry strategy should be data-driven and only what the customer thinks matters. You know, when you're in a lab or a vacuum or an ivory tower and you're saying um, or, or advocating for a particular position, 
if you don't have a customer prospect behind you and real data behind you, what you're saying should be diluted you know, enormously. It's almost meaningless unless you can show this is what the market thinks. And that means talking their language, understanding their problems and their pain, sometimes understanding their, their workflow, especially if it's a B2B kind of company or if it's a consumer, you know, understanding what they're getting out of that, pers- uh, that purchase. So although you can outsource quantitative data, I think the qualitative data really needs to be done by the, the management team and the people who are working with the business and going to have continuity staying with the business over time. You know, it's easy to gather quantitative research and put it in a report and have everyone review that. But qualitative research is going to go places based on the feedback and direction and iteration that happens in talking with and interviewing those customers. So we'll talk a lot about the qualitative versus the quantitative side of market research. Obviously, statistics is qualitative. I'm sorry, quantitative. And qualitative is more like focus groups and interviews and sort of the softer part of understanding what the customer is thinking. So let's get into it and talk about research and the steps for research. (laughs) 